Hello, this is Cocoon, and I'm here today with the Analog Rhythm, and it's a fantastic drum machine, as you all know by now. And I'm going to take you for a deeper spin and try and show you how to how to use it to make a song. What is song mode? What is chain mode? And how, how do you transfer samples? How do you sync it up to other machines, to your computer? Uh, and how do you work with it to create a song? There's a couple of things that you you would like to to know how to how to do before you can you know start operating fluently and, and uh, create songs without having the hassle of you know trying to find out how to to sync things up. So this is going to be a lengthy tutorial, and I'm gonna you know create something on the fly as we go along. I think and and tackle all the obstacles uh, on the way. So here we go. This is the Analog Rhythm by Electra in Sweden and uh, there's a cuckoo and <laughs> pay attention now, it's going to be a lengthy <laughs> tutorial. Okay, so first thing we'll check out is what firmware this machine is running. Right down here in the corner you can see flashing very quickly when you booted the firmware. So let's boot it up and see what firmware we're running. 102C. Okay, so I'm going to head over to the web page and see if there's any updates. Sometimes it's good to, to perform software updates because they squash bugs and introduce new features and even new sound uh, engines. So it's keep an eye open on electron.se. Let's check it out. Let's try it out here at electron.se and support some downloads. Yes. We've got an update, yeah, 102D, I've got C, so let's download that. And to, you know, push that into the synth, um, we've got an application down here called Sysx Manager, C6 Sysx. So uh, let's open that, and Windows OS X, OS X, yeah, let's do that. So, um, I guess they're here somewhere. Yeah, there we go, Algorithm and a C6. <clears throat> yeah, there it is. Just install it like that, and uh, then we've got uh, firmware here and uh, stuff going on. Okay, let me uh, show you really quickly how you install this uh, firmware update. Okay, so the first thing you need is a standard USB cable, also called a printer cable, and uh, Connect it to the computer, USB 2. Then you need to press function and global and go into the system menu, yeah, far below. And go down to the bottom and there's the OS upgrade. Press it, the OS upgrade, waiting for SysX. So um, the computer is gonna send a SysX file and it's gonna upgrade. So let's try it and open C6, there it is, and uh, let's see, wow, it's full screen. And let's press config first, it has already detected the analog rhythm, and so there we go, and I'm gonna drag and drop the C6 file into this window, and I'm gonna press send, and see what happens. And yes, we could see it's sending it over, And the reason for this being so incredibly slow, I should have made sure that the, the unit is also communicated in term, turbo mode. I'll show you later on. Cool, it's done. It's now updated and probably got some new features. So since we're connected and everything, let's uh, upload some samples into it. Function global takes me to a global menu and there is a sample library. I press it and I can browse uh, whatever else on the disk. It's actually just a, a sort of a disk. Uh, I think it's called a plus drive and it's probably around one or two gigabytes. I'm, I'm, I don't remember which one it is, but it's it's fairly large. So, um, and these, you press yes and there is uh, some samples. Yeah, a lot of samples. If you want to preview these, you can press function and yes. And when you're previewing, it's previewing the sample through the slot that's activated. So if, if I press track and another slot, 
and you know it, it's got some very different settings and pre through that one through that one yeah, so pay attention to there's something you should know and you see these arrows on the side these are side menus if you press r left you're going to the side menu on the left. If you press right, you're going to the side menu on the right. So basically on the left, you've got viewing options and on the right, you've got um, actions uh, that you can take. So I'm going to set up a folder where I want to upload stuff. So uh, I've got a folder here called incoming and I go into this one, press the side menu and press uh, and, and do upload here. Eesh. So now everything that's uploading is going to end up here. Uh, cool. Okay, so I mentioned the turbo mode. This is how you turn it on. It, it should, it's very important to uh, function global, go into this MIDI config, and go into MIDI port config. And up here, you could set the input from and the output to. To USB only, this uh, will ensure you to be able to to communicate much faster than if media USB is on. Uh, so uh, USB only, and also there's another thing here, and uh, that I, it took me a long time to figure out actually that um, in the media channels, the thing called um, auto channel. If it's set to, to, to channel 1, it will disturb the turbo mode, so turbo mode won't work. It took me a long time to figure out actually, but don't don't use order channel 1 when you're transferring files uh, because it go very slow. So I've got these samples and I want to um, take them into C6. Here we go, C6, and uh, select these, all of these go into this place here yeah so we've got all these samples I select all of them and I'm just going to press send and we're going to see them pop up here so I press send there you go now you can see here there's a sample coming in and this uh, when you're in turbo mode it's um, it's pretty quick but it, it's not like full USB 2 uh, speed but it, it's it's fairly quick so there you go here's the next one and it's just start filling up and one thing that you should know about is that this is happening in the background so I could go out of this menu I could play some things and and then I go back here and I see yeah it's still uploading so this is a background process this is very cool I, I'm not sure uh, they recommend you doing it in the background while you're performing but you should know that it's it's all very possible and so okay we're going yeah we're done file transfer is done yeah and we all got it here in this folder that I call incoming yes so if I want to create a new folder here errors there. if I press left I'm gonna enter this I can chose to view what's what's in the RAM memory and or I could view the plus drive and on this side I could uh, do actions so this is view viewing things and this is actions I go here and uh, say create directory uh, hold down uh, function to get this nice uh, high score keyboard so I call it uh, Japanese Japanese okay well there are many E's there but okay that's alright so where is it Japanese it's right there so if I want to move everything here, I could uh, use the right arrow and, type, and, and use select all. And uh, yeah, and when normal, when the selection when there's a selection, I could go down and select this select for move. Douche, fourteen samples select for move. So I go out here. I go to this new folder where I just created Japanese, and right here I'm gonna say. Um, on the left menu, uh, move here. Dish. So let's just move them into another folder. 
This is how you work with this little um, menu in the file system. You could, uh, okay, so they're all there. And uh, so right now they're on the plus drive, but not loaded into the project yet. Let's start a completely new project and take it all from scratch. So function global, I go to project, project manager, I go down here and say, I stand here and see the right arrow, in the case there's a right menu, initialize new, yes, clearing, and there we go. I'm gonna rename it and call it uh, tutorial. Uh, to and then function and no is um, uh, erasing so there you go yes just renamed it great tutorial yes and I want to uh, load from when you load something it always asks you if you want to save the previous one if you're in manage project manager mode but if but if you uh, if if you're in load project mode it doesn't ask for saving so keep that in mind so project manager uh, tutorial load from yes save yes and saving takes a little while there you go and then it's loading the new one So a project can uh, contain, I don't know, um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight banks of 16 uh, patterns. So there's uh, pretty much space there to, to do stuff. And, okay, now we're done, we load it up, and I believe it's just a, I'm gonna turn the volume up. This is the standard, you know, this is where you start out with everything. So let's take those samples uh, that were just uploaded into the machine and uh, load them into the, uh, the different pads. So, uh, okay. Um, function and global is a great way to start. And go into the samples menu and uh, view the ROM. The ROM is totally empty of samples because we just started a new, a new thing. So. Uh, we could do it this way. I'm going to view the plus drive again. Uh, I want all of these samples. Uh, I could preview them like this. I want all of them. Right menu. Load to project. Dish. Confirm. So there you go. Going out. And uh, right now, these are all synthesis based. They are analog analog drums track select to select the different tracks and if we let's do the kick drum first okay and um, we've got a synth page sample page filter amp LFO we go to the sample page and start twisting this and we see them they just appear here in a nice order and I turn the volume of the sample up and up Turn the volume of the synth down. So now it's just a sample. Yeah? Yeah, let's do that for all of them and see what we've got. And I could copy and paste things here, like sample and synth. If I want to copy the sample page, I press it and press copy. And I go here and I press it and press paste. So I just sampled it. Uh, and this, I want it to be empty. So we've got all the samples in here. I prepared a little. Um, so I'm, I'm not going to tell you how you uh, make patterns because I already made another video with that. Uh, so I made this little sequence here with, with the drums that are just important and. Uh, And 
so how do you go from grooving in one pattern to making a longer song? And of course, there's just as many answers as there are players, I guess. Uh, I've seen um, the secret, one of the secrets within the excellence of uh, Mr. Dataline when he is doing his magic is that he's constantly, I mean constantly, changing everything at all times. He could be working in one uh, page, one sixteen beat, uh, sixteen uh, trigs long loop, and constantly change it all the time. You know, like this. Muting things and, and hitting accents uh, like, like the kick drum, for instance. Maybe it should be um, changed in tune. Makes, it makes it come to life, maybe uh, like that, that thing there should be changed you know, to make it come to life, you know, you need to constantly change things, if it's just a stay loop it would just be a stale loop, and it's stay a stale loop. And uh, I encourage you all to to go uh, and you know be on the machine and tweak it at all times. So that, that being said, sometimes you just want to make a straight sequence of of uh, you know loops and stuff. So I'm going to take you through uh, first chain mode, and then later on song mode. These are two modes to do that. Chain mode is a way to do uh, um, just a, se a small sequence of pattern changes uh, uh, and then step out of it and be in one pattern at a time. Just something you could trigger right away whenever you want. Song mode is something you need to plan a, a little bit ahead. So okay, chain mode, how do you do that? Um, basically, if I press this and I see I'm in pattern one now, and if I want to copy pattern one into pattern two, I press this one to highlight the patterns, this one and copy, copy pattern. And then I press this and then to the pattern where I want to copy it to, keep it pressed and press paste and keep it pressed until the four little uh, indicators indicate that you're done copying. So it's a delayed function. I could copy it again to this paste and you can see that counting, counting down. So I just copy the same pattern to um, slot number one, two, or three here. Yeah, it's the same. So if I want to, you know, if I want to make a change in pattern two, maybe make it less uh, energetic. So how to do that? Okay, let's uh, this one, I'm going to make it um, um, <clears throat> less, I'm going to make it shorter. So sample, I'm going to make the sample end a little bit shorter. On both sides. And this is going to be, yeah, reversed. With samples, I think to make a softest uh, attack is to to bring the starting point a bit further into the sample. So I could do that here. Okay, go. Coming 
So how to do two, you know, alternate between these two. Okay, so chain mode, something you could turn on and off. And you can see down here, there's a small local list of patterns. I'm in A1, but you can see there's A2 is listed out right behind it because I, I've done something. If I press this while as I press two of the other ones, you can see chain mode is lighting up. I'm going to do it again. I'm going to do this and one and three. And there you can see A1 and A3 has been highlighted here. And if I do even one, two, three, you can see there's a little arrow there, meaning there's more things to it. So, so if I select several patterns, it will make a small list. Now we're in pattern two, and number three is going to be identical to number one. Okay. And if I turn off chain mode, it just stops there and right there. Okay. So chain mode is a way to, when you're live, especially when you're live, uh, performing live. It doesn't have to be that you're live on a concert or something. But when you're performing live, whether you're recording or not, performing on stage, this is something to to use if you want to line up a few patterns in a row and play them uh, in a sequence. Okay, so song mode, what's that? Well, song mode is a, a longer list of patterns played in a sequence. And if I press like this, it's activated and it's deactivated. If I press function and song, it's going to go into this list mode and uh, you could press, you know, with the arrow keys, you can, well, it's not a list, there's no list yet, but if I stand, you can see it, now it's marked, now it's uh, in the middle of, you know, after it. If it's marked and I select um, a pattern is now, you know, changed, but if the marker the cursor is afterwards and I, I select you know and this song is going to play a1 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 and a2 a1 a1 and one a2 cool and if I press function and yes I'm going to add a new row uh, and uh, the new row could behave like a totally different one and with yes well you could clearly see now how I navigate this thing and uh, so let's see, row two is going to be um, like a verse. I'm going to press uh, B, uh, two, and then function and yes. Uh, oh, sorry, <laughs> edit. And then we're going to go, you know, it's just like a normal text editor in, in a way. Go, go there and uh, it's just I don't have any good example like music works right now but let's um make um okay a three a three a three and then I realized well um I should have deleted that out point put the marker there and press function and no well that's what I thought okay the marked one cannot be deleted okay so function and no is like a, a backspace button but if there's one that is active it can't be deleted from the list so um, okay and I, I you know I'm not just because the the display stops there doesn't stop me from doing even more like it could be endless I guess so and also what's cool is that in the end here you can see a multi multiplier um, that I could change so I could say like okay start out here play it uh, four times go into this bridge play it two times and then uh, yeah play this long thing uh, function and yes new line uh, play the uh, sorry um, play it the um, I'm gonna put the marker there, play this one, and then that one, and then um, 
yes go into the next one and let's say this is the end it's going to be oh sorry i, I always forget that yeah and that's the end and then let's uh, just t this is a live show go here and uh, make it an eternal ending just in case i forget to press stop and let's say this is like a an empty silent uh, pattern uh, prepared to be safe so we now created a, a small you know song here and uh, if i press song it's going to be activated in song mode when i press play it's going to start start performing in the, you can see they just jump to the second one yeah there's just a playlist of patterns To earn. And as this is playing, you could be out here and you know muting and playing live. Yeah. Well, you get the idea. This is song mode. So how do we store the songs let's take a look at that um you can see song here mode there's the song mode it's activated and you can edit it but up here uh, there's also song so let's see function and song see what happens there i could load and save songs so i could rename this and call it uh call it uh japan And then, yeah, song renamed. And let's go in there again and see what we do. I could save it, save it. So we've got all these song slots per project. I could save, save it slot one. It's called Song uh, Japan. Song, if we go and load, I can see it there. It's, it's right there. So this is a way to, to line up songs. And it's, it, you know, load it. If we're going to load this, uh, load. I'm going to load it now. Pay attention to how quick it is. You know, it's just there. It's very quick. So if you prepare a lot of songs within the same project, it's going to be instant to load. Uh, so that's nice. Okay, when you hear this, this is a little rhythm that I prepared. You can hear that it's swinging heavily. It's in heavy, heavy swing mode. So if we go here, function and swing, I can set the swing level. Cannot go negative swing, but what you can do is you see all these dots here. These are the swing points. So I could, I, did you hear that? I could enter, you know, local swing changes, uh, whatever it, it makes sense to the music. And uh, these swing triggers are, are changed per track. Uh, like if I turn off the swing points here, I just have one swing point there. On the other track, I could have a totally different set of swing uh, points. And so, so it's a part of the sequencer. Uh, but the swing level is global. Okay. Uh, there is this thing called um, retrig, like. Um, if you touch this button over here, things is retrigging. So the so the retrig isn't recorded live, but you could program it really easy. So I could go in here, press up, press up again to activate retrig. Is this is the length of the retrig? This is the rate? Uh, so let's do this and make it a little longer and see. Yeah, very long. And if this one is starting out really low and then pressing up again, increasing the velocity over time. Yeah. 
So that last parameter is increasing or decreasing velocity over time, over the time of the of this length. So I'm going to do a faster one. And maybe the other way around. I start at hard and uh, go really silent. Yeah, yeah it works fine. Yeah. That's retrig. Retrig, um, to my knowledge, uh, doesn't seem to respond to uh, swing settings. Okay, another thing that that I haven't talked about is like, <coughs> okay, I'm going to make a new kit here. Uh, this is very important. When you create something like a song here, got this sound, and then you want to create something totally new here you want to start from scratch pay attention to what kit you make you're using because just starting from scratch over here you're gonna to have to you know change sounds and stuff but if it's if it's the same kit as it being used over here this is going to be changed too so pay attention to the kit what I'm gonna do now before I, I start something else is uh, function and kit and save kit. I'm going to save it to number one and call it um, first. First, yeah. So kit number first, and I go here, and it still says first. So, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to save this kit um, to. The second one and call it second. Second, yeah? Yeah. I'm gonna make a long sample. Is there? And what I'm gonna show you now is you know, when you are in grid mode, you enter tricks like this. Okay, so yeah, I'm gonna make this longer like this. <clears throat> okay, and if I press function in the trig, I I'm gonna make like a. It's not a retrig, it's just a point where you could make changes. So for instance, I make changing, change the um, tuning of this place. It's not retrigging the sound, it's just changing parameters of the sound. Yeah. You can see they're dimly lit. But when you press it, it's it's fully lit. So dimly lit with function means that it's just a parameter trig. As I'm sure there's a better word for it. I call it a parameter trig. Let's see. Um, so um, I'm gonna make a sh like some changes here. Let's say let's say the reverb and delay it. So it's totally dry, okay? So right here I'm gonna just boost the the delay and reverb and right here I'm gonna bring it back. And right here, I'm gonna 
maxed it out again. Yeah, so if I want to sli slide these, you know, there's something called slide here. Let's enter that mode. Okay. If I press slide, let's see what happens. Yeah. Basically, I could slide between all these settings uh, independently. So, uh, function and slide. Yeah. Just gonna, you know, do this and see what happens. So basically, you can see that all the ones that are hitting the notes. Yeah, so that could be very useful and powerful. Another thing that you might find um, inspiring to use is uh, function and right and left. When you're in grid mode, I guess, well, maybe let's go to the drum. You can see a lot of tricks here, and if I press function and right, you're just shoving everything to the side. So it's basically cycling everything through, you know, pushing it right and left. This could produce some you know, variation and, and some crazy things that you weren't aware of, uh, like, okay. You, you need to pay attention so you could get it back to where you started but it's a quite you know um, uh, inspiring way to just shove things around a little bit and like maybe that maybe that one doesn't have to be you know on the same place all the time so maybe just That's a, I'd say, very funny. Yeah. <clears throat> so, what if you want to hook it up to to another synthesizer like this? You did several ways. Let's plug in the audio first and see what happens. And um, here is a little audio. <clears throat> and I'm plugging in here. It's a stereo input, so it's got right and left, and there's nothing really you could do with the signals. Uh, it's coming in and you send it to the compressor in in this device um, it's a bit limited so you you need to make sure that it's it's uh, a high enough volume coming out from this device because you can't gain it here so uh, in this op1 you there's a compressor so you could sort of gain it in here um, uh. Uh. So now it sounds like you know, it's in line with uh, or maybe even exceeding, let's say, uh, the drive here to bring it up. So how do I sync them up? Well, you need a new USB cable, but um, how do you get into this? Well, you need a MIDI cable, and you need something like this, a MIDI USB host, something that translates uh, USB MIDI into normal MIDI. So uh, maybe, you know, there is a USB MIDI port here, but um, it's uh, on a different gender, so it doesn't, you know, 
doesn't work that that way so you need a, a hub so I'm gonna put this in here I'm gonna put a MIDI cable in here MIDI out so I'm gonna let the OP1 be the master and uh, then I'm gonna put this into the OP1 and then we put the MIDI in MIDI in so so right I don't know of the settings right now just I'm just gonna hit play and see what happens get the tape gonna go to some place here and you know okay it's in 120 BPM gonna set an in point one two three four out and play and it plays so what else plays yeah you could hear it's also uh, triggering okay so so if I just want to jam here and send the MIDI clock but not the notes what I do so if we don't want to play the the, the rhythm um, we're gonna prevent the rhythm to, to taking in MIDI notes so what I do then I go into the global menu I'm going to MIDI config and MIDI port configuration and there is a thing you know pretty low down this called receive notes I'm gonna just turn it off so it's not gonna receive and play notes anymore okay so uh, let's just play this I'm playing it from here but there's follows and this the, where the tempo is usually uh, displayed it says external so it's an external clock now this is the master so what happens if I change the tempo It does a fairly good job to keep up. So let's. Uh, okay. Okay, there's a little loop for you. So. good job to keep up but sometimes it gets a little bit out of hand and every time you place the play, play button it restarts but unfortunately when you're in rec mode you press play to exit rec mode yeah, as you can hear it kind of interferes because it starts yeah it doesn't make sense but it, it's making up for it uh, but but it's cool so there's a way to hook them up and um, and this is just one example of MIDI USB hosts I, I know it's very extremely basic it's uh, it does a fairly good job but I, I heard people say that it, you know there's sometimes hanging notes and stuff but it, it's it's decent I know I bought it several years ago so now I'm sure there are much more advanced and, and better USB media host okay okay so in case you do want to play it from an external um, synth I just turn down a volume of the OP1 now and see um, so let's see um, let's say that sound <coughs> I want to play it from the keyboard so just go in here and uh, select that track 
and I go to the global menu, go to media config, media port config, receive notes, and let's see what happens. Um, and you know, so right now it's just sending, it's probably sending on channel number one, and regardless of what channel, it, what track is selected, still receiving uh, channel number one. So what I do is I go to MIDI, um, uh, well, in MIDI config, MIDI channels, there's one thing called uh, auto channel. So what it's gonna do is it's gonna take the thing coming in uh, from channel number one, in this case, and beware because Channel number one is the one that destroys turbo mode um, when you're communicating between computer and and the device. But when you turn it to one, it's taking channel number one and place whatever uh, track that's selected. And by the way, this is not latency, this is uh, a starting point. Okay, so, yeah. You get the idea. So it's also a way to, to live record into the sequencer. Okay. So now this is playing that little chord and these are playing the drums. But then here playing that one. So it's very flexible how you want to use it. So if you want to synchronize even more, you know, it's it's up to you how you want, which one is the master and which one is following the master and stuff. But right now, you know, the OP1 is pressing play and sending the meter clock. And this one is uh, following the meter clock and it's playing and stopping and changing the, uh, the tempo. And then it's sending out, um, Basically, I set it up to send clock further onto this, uh, so MIDI out to sync A, and I send the clock, and what else? Uh, I send transport control so that this is playing as well, and this is receiving transport, and it's in MIDI in. So it's a chain of, you know, this is controlling this one, and this is controlling that one. So when I press play here, you can see on this, it's, uh, it's playing, yeah? If I record something, yeah?
if I press stop on the master, everything will, oh, this the mirror, hello. Yeah, if I press stop on the master, you know, everything will stop. If I press stop on just one device, I just stop this, but not this one, because this is further away in the chain. And you need to find out what signals you want to send between um, the units. If you want to, you could send uh, the mute, like here. Look at this. Well, it's it's out of yeah, it's out of range. But I could mute signals both here and here. And whether this is something you want to do or not do, uh, it's something you need to turn on and off. So let's see how I do that. Um, uh, which one is it? I, I get confused myself sometimes. There's a lot of ports here. Let's see. Mute destination. Uh, internal and external. It means it sends mute um, information off to um, to other connected devices. If it's just internal, I can mute here, but it's not getting muted here. So it's much more convenient for this setup. Yeah, okay. So what if we want to connect it to a DAW, like a Logic Pro? Um, how do we do that? How would you make it follow? Let's try and do just that. In order to remote control the analog rhythm with, uh, for instance, Logic or any other DAW, uh, there's a few things we could have to set up. So we'll go into the menu here and MIDI config and MIDI sync. I want this to be controlled by um, Logic. So I want it to receive clock. I don't want to send the clock, but I get the clock from, from Logic. I want to receive transport, like play and stop. I don't want to send transport because then it will interfere. And I want, I want it to receive program changes because when I perform on this and I record it on the computer, I want to also send the program changes uh, so that I can send uh, whichever pattern I'm in and stuff. And I want it to record that and then send it back here for playback. And media port config, is there something here? Yeah, I want, you know, I'm connected on the USB cable now, so I'm sure to have USB enabled here. And let's see, track channel. Okay, I want the output channel to be on track channel rather than auto channel. Uh, I want this, I'm not sure about this, but I'd like parameter output to be on CC because I'm not sure that Logic can handle an RPN, so I'll turn it to CC. And uh, all of these should be on. I want to receive notes so that I can sequence things in the sequencer on the, in Logic and play it here. And uh, I want to receive uh, CC messages. Okay. And meter channels is basically the default, so what all the channels are corresponding to the default values. Uh, nothing special there. Uh, in order to control this from logic, you need to know first of all that this is not a MIDI sequencer. It says in the user manual that you cannot um, program external MIDI devices with the device itself. So um, whatever is programmed onto the device will not send out MIDI signals. However, live uh, signals like uh, you know this will send out MIDI signals so any, anything you do live will uh, be sent out so you could uh, program this uh, and then record a performance uh, where you perform with it and then without entering any notes or stuff but just tweaking and performing and you could record that and play it back later. So that's what we're going to do now. So if we go to to um, Logic Pro and I press some notes here, you can see that yeah, it receives some sort of media data. And first, I thought that I was going to do uh, external MIDI, but it, it turns out in um, Logic, 
there's always um, midi through going on you can't sort of turn it off without going into environment and get a little bit technical uh, at least I didn't find it and uh, so we're gonna go with software instruments instead I'm gonna do just one track and create so there we go one software instrument and there's no uh, no instrument is loaded and instead of um, loading an instrument uh, I'm gonna go for the external instrument and you know this doesn't matter but let's do a stereo <laughs> MIDI and there it is electron analog rhythm is connected I didn't install anything it's just there and uh, MIDI channel uh, all input that's sound input well we're not gonna record it audially now for now but maybe later so okay and another thing you need to set up is if I press command comma I bring up preferences and we go to MIDI settings and let's see what we have here um, these are all default and I didn't actually change any of the default values but here on the sync page you can go head over to, to MIDI sync project settings and there this was unhooked transmit MIDI clock to the electron outlook rhythm and it's it's just there it just pops up and did I do anything more let's see general uh, let's see this MIDI um, no still default so I prepared a few uh, patterns that I could change with and I I did some different um, scene changes and I did some you know you could mute tracks and let's record this and see if if logic keeps up with what I'm doing so let's go ahead and record a uh, like a performance a very simple one so I'm gonna press record it's gonna count me in and go just play it just start playing it automatically I'm gonna mute a few I'm gonna go to uh, scene mode and See, see if it captured all that. In the midst of all this, I pressed a note, and uh, there it is. <laughs> and for some reason, I, I, I couldn't get it to come into the right octave. So I need to, to make a like a transpose compensation minus 24. But I'm not going into that now. Let's see if if it in fact recorded. Uh, what what I did. So I press play. So far, so I'm gonna keep track of the scenes, and you can see here it's uh, doing the unmuting and the muting. Yeah, and it's it's uh, yeah. So in fact, it just works. Yeah. So if I, let's say I uh, change the tempo. What happens? to 130 and I press it okay and yeah I need to reset it manually okay yeah it just works let's see if it keeps up with that yeah it works well you can kind of record the whole performance but you could also add uh, stuff that you you don't have fingers enough to do in one go um, when you go into the project settings um, in the record settings there's this thing MIDI overlapping recordings what should you do when they overlap join when you're in cycle mode or join selected regions and create take folders 
I'm going to go with this just to show you how you could build up something more than what you could do live in one take. So I'm going to set it to join with cycles. This could also be interesting if you plan to record several uh, um, several channels at once. It will automatically split them up. Um, okay, so eight bars and. I'm going to go with some heavy use of the scenes first, in the first go, and then I'm going to go and change uh, parameters. So let's see what happens. Record. playing back what I just uh, did, right? So let's go to um, to this um, kick drum. I'm going to add some crazy bit of cross to it and to that snare. is a very efficient way to kind of remote control the the unit and do things that you cannot even do on the unit like these smooth automated things you can't even animate them this is a, a step based system so you, you can't do these fluid changes in the same way that you can in a DAW so um, it's a great way to to kind of control it and it syncs it syncs great um it just sinks yeah but you need to be aware of when you start fiddling around with the parameters and then you uh, even though when i live drag this you could see the parameters changing live as i do this but when i go back to the beginning there's no guarantee that it it's exactly as it, how it was when I started doing it because some parameters might have changed and then in the beginning of the file they might not have a um, a, a keyframe whatever it's called they might not have like animation data right in the beginning so so it's a bit rock and roll but but it's really cool uh, it's a cool way to um, to get more out of it than you uh, could well, uh, yeah, what I didn't even show you um, is the, okay, I record something over here, is the, the same thing works with the, um, so the, thing, the same thing applies when you uh, jump between patterns, it gets recorded as well, this is, uh, so there you go, this has been a, a long tutorial I know, but well, it's not really a tutorial, it's just me fiddling around and I don't know frankly what I'm doing, but I'm finding out what, how things work along the process and I hope you, you're learning from, from my mistakes as well. So um, there you go, and the fact that Electron is working very hard on the thing called Overbridge is very exciting. Overbridge is the missing link between the analogs and the computer. 
So it's going to be a, like a VST interface, something that's going to just work, you know, it's going to have all access to all the parameters, everything's going to be visually, you know, it's all going to just work. But it's not going to come out uh, until they're ready with it. And frankly, I think we have to wait a bit. Um, but if you're watching this video in the future, then maybe it is already out, but you know, it's not out now. And um, yeah, that's it for today. I hope um, I hope you had a good time. And if if you care to donate a few bucks every time I make a new video like this, you can go ahead and click on this link. It's, it's going to take you to Patreon, and you sit, can set up. Well, my goal with Patreon is that I want you know hundreds of hundreds of donators that just donate like one or two or three dollars every time I make a new video. Uh, it's not much, but it adds up and it means that I can make better videos and better quality, longer, more videos and, you know, invite guests and go go to to, to like the NAM show and interview people and, and do all these interesting videos if, if we can uh, be more uh, interested geeks uh, caring to donate a few bucks. Will be very helpful, and if you if you are the one who did, I salute you. If you just want to see the videos and don't want to support me, uh, just click on this button instead, and uh, and you'll subscribe to my channel, and it'll all fine. And now, sometime maybe you could you know <laughs> go to this place and, and you know. Well, I shouldn't be begging. I'm very thankful that you're watching these uh, my videos. And and by the way, I don't have any third hand now. But if you want to go to uh, interact with me, I'm uh, I'm also on Facebook. I've got a Facebook group called a page called uh, Cuckoo Music. Just one word, just like on Facebook, uh, just the same as here on YouTube. So facebook.com slash um, cuckoo music so I think we're about a little bit over a thousand people there following there uh, very very cool of you to do that I'm responding to comments on YouTube but in terms of uh, comments and, 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 and conversations I think face the Facebook page is a better place people tend to to uh, comment and and talk to each other and I I'm involved too so if you want to be more involved come to Facebook um, yeah that's it for today see you soon again <laughs>